So you want a fursuit, right? Well, you may be wondering how to commission one if you're a first-time buyer. Today I'll be talking about the do's and don'ts of commissioning a fursuit. Now, first of all, you don't need a fursuit to be part of the furry fandom. In fact, a majority of the fandom does not have a fursuit. But besides that, let's get started. The don'ts. Alright, I'm starting with the don'ts because these are some of the most important things to consider when commissioning a fursuit. 1. Do not commission if you cannot afford it. This is taking the first and most important spot of the don'ts due to how important this is to the maker and the buyer. I said this in my last video about commissioning art, but this also goes for fursuits. Here's the thing. What this means is, even if you have all the money needed, make sure you have enough money left over for other stuff. Yeah, fursuits are cool and all, but don't spend all your money on one without having enough to pay for basic living expenses or emergencies. It's not the creator's job to give your money back because your car broke down or you can't afford rent for the month. Please just make sure you aren't commissioning and buying big things like fursuits if you can't truly afford it. Number two, don't haggle. Fursuits are pricey, yes, but that's because of the material costs and the cost of labor for the suit. The maker will price their suits based on their brand and how much they need to profit from this work. Now, despite popular belief, fursuit makers are not rich, and they do not make a lot of money off their work. The absolute worst thing you could do is ask a maker to lower their prices to suit what you want it to be, when the prices have most likely already been calculated enough to give the maker the profit they choose. If you don't like the maker's price, don't buy it. It's that simple. Number 3. Do not buy a fursuit if you are still growing. I know this topic is up for debate whether young furries should be able to buy fursuits. Now, unless you're mega rich and can afford a new fursuit every few years, it's best to wait it out until you can get a fursuit that you will be able to wear for a longer period of time. Most makers won't even let people buy fursuits if you're under 18 anyway due to the buyers not legally being able to enter a contract. This can also be risky for the maker as they do not know where the money is coming from, and if there's a 13 year old trying to commission a fursuit, it's kinda sketchy. If you're still determined to have some sort of suit while you're still growing, the best option would be to get a mini partial. A mini partial is a great choice for younger furs as they don't cost as much as a full body suit, and these include hand paws, a head, and a tail. I suggest a mini partial due to the lack of feet paws in a bodysuit, as those are the main parts that people will most likely grow out of. Now let's get on to the do's. Number 1. A clear reference sheet. One of the first things you'll need is a clear reference sheet of your character that you want made into a fursuit. The best way to get a quilt accepted is to have a clear, digital, three pose reference sheet. This makes it easier for the maker to get markings correct on the character and to be able to get all sides. It's best to not submit traditional media or art pieces as references for fursuits, as this can make the work a lot harder or just have your quote not accepted. Many artists are willing to create reference sheets for a price. Make sure you find someone who can create a good, clear sheet. One artist I actually recommend is Neon Slushy. They're known for making a lot of really good reference sheets, and some makers will even discount you if you use them. Number 2. Making a good duct tape dummy. Now most makers will ask for a duct tape dummy to be able to create a bodysuit that fits your specific body. It's important to create a good one as this will be what the maker is using to mimic you being there. There are many tutorials online that can help you make a suitable duct tape dummy. I'll link a few down below. Now there are a few makers who don't require a duct tape dummy and just need a body measurements, but when you're looking for a fursuit it's best to expect that you'll need to make one. Number 3. You get what you pay for. If you buy from a newer or inexperienced maker, do remember that you're getting what you paid for. A lot of newer makers will often price their suits at a much lower price than professional makers due to their inexperience and quality of suits. This can be a good deal to get a cheaper suit and to support newer makers, but it's important to remember you aren't going to get the quality of the likes of makers who've been doing this for over a decade. Number 4. Be patient. You are commissioning a fursuit. These things take a while to make. It's important to keep good communication with the maker to make sure you're getting work in progresses if they offer them. But do remember that these do take a few months to even years. The time depends on the makers, so it's also important to not compare times between makers as everyone is in a different situation that results in different time frames. You can also check this out on their terms of service where they will most likely have an estimated time of arrival, or you can message them and they'll most likely respond with an estimated time of arrival for your type of suit. And these are the do's and don'ts of commissioning a fursuit. Let me know below in the comments if you are also a maker and would add anything to this list. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.